reservation is at 8.45 and it is currently 8.42. Yay! So we're going to be rushing for any like quick little buttons to be able to get there on time or at least get there within our time. So, yeah, we have, we have that to look forward to. Exercise in the morning. <laughs> Waffles, which Mickey, Mickey Waffles, I was really excited about. The characters were awesome and a lot of fun to interact with. Um, definitely recommend. If you have picky eaters, it's okay because they have a lot of plain stuff. They also have donuts. Krispy Kreme donuts were on the menu, so that's good too. Uh, now we're off to Kilimanjaro Safari. Uh, I'm not sure where it is, but we'll find out. Um, ah, yes, I see it. Over there. Yes, we're going up our way on to Kilimanjaro Safari. We have a fast pass for that. And after and after Kilimanjaro Safari, we're going to go to. I don't know where all these people are born. Is this the fast pass line? Yes, it is. Is it really? Fast pass line. Oh my. I think. Yeah, that's the standby entrance. Well, so much for the fast passes working. You keep the 35 cents Yeah, it's kind of crazy. But anyway, um, so we're going to try and get onto this. And then we're going to go from there. So, yeah. It's 14 days, half a month. Now, I do have one extremely important request that is that everyone must stay fully and completely seated at all times. There is absolutely, positively no standing up on the truck at any time for any reason whatsoever. It gets bumpy, it gets bouncy out there, and I'd like to come back with all of you. Now, parents, that goes for our smaller passengers as well. If you'd like them to see better, you're more than welcome to have them sit on your lap, but they must stay fully seated either on your lap or on the seat at all times. Please do not lift them up in the air. Now, watering holes like this over here on the left bring loads of animals like I don't know, Okapi, Bongo, Greeter, Kudu, Yellowback, Dike, or even sh shy and rare animals like the black rhino. Yes, folks, black rhino are very shy. Uh, they're also an endangered species with fewer than 5,000 of them left out in the wild. The black rhino is about 3,000 pounds. They have a very thick hide. They can charge at roughly 35 miles per hour. And I'm gonna try, try to pull up just a little bit more so we can actually hopefully see its face and not just the back view of it. Hello, Mr. Rhino. I guess that's a view we're gonna get of it right now. Wait, really? Really? I blame the black rhino. Over here on the right hand side, that's right, bongos. Now bongos are known as a ghost of the forest, very typically shy, reclusive animals. They like to hide and blend in with their surroundings. That's how they got the nickname of Ghost of the Forest. I'm never gonna stop at that black rhino again. I just, I'm just kidding, I probably I have to. But uh I can't, the moment I started moving, right? Is that what yeah, it's like? Yeah. Yep. yep. All right, saddle build storks over here on the left-hand side. Black and white bird with the yellow saddle shape on its bill. Fully sitting up there, five feet tall with a wingspan of eight to nine feet. Does make them the tallest orca here in Africa. One is kneeling down, the other one's laying down. 
All right, so we're gonna head out of the Little Aturi Forest now. We are gonna head on into the Sotme River. Yep, folks, that's right, river. But it's okay where we're going. We don't need roads. Sotme River just happens to be home to one of my favorite animals, the Nile hippopotamus. When hippos are born, they're about 85 pounds, and an adult male can tip the scales at nearly 5,000 pounds. So there are a couple on the right-hand side over there. If you don't get a good view of them, don't worry. Safari Guide Intuition tells me we're gonna see some more coming up on the left. So get those cameras ready on the left-hand side. Now, male hippos, uh, in order to mark their territory, use a beautiful technique called defecation. Kids, if you don't know what that means, be sure to ask your parents. They'll be more than happy to tell you. <laughs> more than happy. So they spend about 18 to 20 hours of the day in or underneath the water. We have a pretty good view of some hippos over here on the left. Now, these hippos are hanging out in the water, which is what they do, like I said, 18 to 20 hours of the day. They're hanging out in a group, and a group of hippos together is called a bloat. Yes, it's true. It's a bloat. Google it. They average eating about 150 pounds worth of food every day and can hold their breath underwater for up to eight minutes at a time. Large white birds are pink back pelican. They fish in shallow waters. They sleep in nests and trees as a committee at night. And a group of pelicans is called a pod. So you have a pod of pelicans and a bloat of hippos. A couple more hippos. All right, now the reason why I ask that everyone does stay fully and completely seated at all times is because we go over some bumpy roads and some old bridges, and you never know what's on the other side of these roads and bridges. For instance, coming up over here on the left, the very real, the very dangerous human being. <laughs> but below them, something even more dangerous, the Nile crocodile. And again, those are very real as well. Now the Nile crocodile is one of the longest of the cold-blooded reptiles. They're about 18 to 20 feet in length. Now they will open up their mouths to regulate their body temperatures because they are cold-blooded. But their jaws have a bone-crushing power of about 2,000 pounds per square inch. We're just going to hang out here for just a minute. Everyone facing this. It's not a, normally a place where we get to hang out. But we do get to hang out and check out the crocs over here. I'm going to wait for the truck in front of us to move a little bit more before we head on out. Just want a little bit more room than what we have now, but here we go. Just as a reminder, folks, please stay seated at all times, even if we are stopped. Like I said, their jaws have a bone crushing power of about 2,000 pounds per square inch. So, I know what I think we should get out of here. As we head over the river and through the woods, right into the truck in front of us. <laughs> little bit in the way up here but it's better than the backside view of this particular the side giraffe right here so. Aww, look at that. see if it's gonna reach out its tongue just thinking about it for a second giraffe tongues are purple in color as well they are purple to prevent the tongues from getting sunburned because their tongues actually spend as much time inside the mouth as they do outside the mouth. Okay, right? Baby giraffe. Alright, coming up on the right hand side, a coolie cat will use to keep their bodies cool by pumping the blood up into their horns. Then once it's cooled off, they'll pump it back down into their bodies. Kind of like their own natural air conditioning system. So a coolie cattle on the right on the top of the hill, up out of the acacia tree, white bearded wildebeest. Sable antelope on the right hand side, emblem or symbol of the Harambe Wildlife Preserve. Very, very protective of their young. They use those slope torrents on the tops of their heads to show dominance when sparring. Darker the sable, the more dominant and more mature they are. Coming up on the island, greater flamingo. 
largest and lightest in pink coloring of the flamingo. They are white gray puffball at birth, but they get their pink coloring later on in life from eating brine, shrimp, and other crustaceans very high in carotene. A group of flamingo together is called a flamboyance. That's true. Very true. Now the small white birds that are hanging out with the flamingo, those aren't baby flamingo, those are actually ibis. Now ibis are native to Florida. We have no idea how they got here on the reserve in Africa. <laughs> Very long migration. But we're going to keep moving forward deeper into the reserve, see what else we can find. Keep our eyes peeled for lions and cheetahs, maybe some zebras, and hopefully white rhino. I say hopefully white rhino. This is white rhino very, very heavily hunted down by poachers for their horns. Their horns are worth a lot of money on the black market. In fact, researchers fear if the poaching of the white rhino does not have a... <laughs> of course. 5,000 pounds, a female slightly larger than the male, and they get their name from the Afrikaans word fight, which means wide or broad mouth. The bonds box, small brown and white reserve dwelling antelope, means they're extinct out in the wild and only seen in reserves like this. So we'll get another view of the zebra in a few minutes. Those are grant or plain zebras. Now a lot of people think that zebras are white with black stripes, but they're not. They're actually black with white stripes. You can tell that by looking at their noses. They have black noses. Therefore, they are black with white stripes. Keep your eyes peeled up in the hills. We're going to be looking for my favorite animal, the fastest of the land mammals, the cheetah. Yep, right by that tree over there on the left. The cheetahs, they can run on land about 65. 70 miles per hour and they do that in sprints of several hundred yards their bodies get overheated they have to keep themselves cool now if you look back on the left folks you'll be able to see it back there laying down next to the tree that tree on the far left so they are the only large feline that purrs they're also the only feline that do not have retractable claws their claws are always out and always ready Just up ahead, you're going to see a large rock formation. This rock formation is known as the Kopi. It's spelled K-O-P-J-E. It is the highest point of the whole reserve, and it is lion country. Lions are pretty much inactive for about 18 to 20 hours of the day, which means they're either sitting around or they're sleeping. It's actually the female lioness who will go out at night and hunt for about four to six hours, while the male lion stays home to protect the pride. Now he roars in the morning and he roars at night to show his dominance that he is the king of the bride. Well, we know it's a female lioness that goes out and does the majority of the work. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yep. While That's the male right. takes all the credit for it at the end, it's what we do. We're guys. That's right. <laughs> oh, there's the male lion. He's laying down there on the left. You see him right there. He's out. Hard day of, uh, hard, hard night of probably protecting the pride. Oh, no. And on the right hand side, you'll see the zebra, the white rhino, and the Bontabak. We're going to get another view of the zebra in just a few moments. I'm so excited. It is, really. Is. Coming up over here on my side of the truck, you're going to see some. Warthog burrows. Now, warthogs are the fastest and largest of the burrowing mammals, reaching a speed on land about the crash of rhino. That second one on the on the uh, right or third from the left, whichever you decide, <laughs> is a baby white rhino born right here in the reserve about two years ago. I know that because that was was born a little bit after I started here at the safaris. Today is my last day here at safaris. Yeah. Going on to. Uh, going on to travel some waters in the Magic Kingdom where the animals are a little more plastic. <laughs> yep. Now, I'm bringing up reintroduction efforts right now because we're about to enter a new area in the reserve known as Magadi Glen. Now, what Magadi Glen is being used for is basically the rehabilitation and eventual reintroduction of animals out in the wild. Animals that are very highly endangered. So depending on their need, the animals here will change from time to time. Now, what we're going to see here today coming up on the right and on the left, antelope known as the Adax, spelled A-D-D-A-X. They are a corkscrew antelope, which describes the three foot long spiral shaped horns on the tops of their heads. Now there are fewer than 300 Adax left out in the wild. 
very highly endangered, but researchers are hoping that with areas like Magadi Glen and with reintroduction efforts, these animals will be able to be kept around and safe for future generations to enjoy as well. Right hand side over there, yellow billed storks. Now they are a carnivorous bird. They in Africa focus on bringing animals back into areas that they used to roam, but no longer do because they were pushed out of those areas by livestock farmers who feel that they need more and more area for their livestock to roam. Now it's not easy to live with some of the animals you've seen the last couple of weeks, but it's very, very important that you learn how to because the lives and the livelihoods of the villagers in Harambe depend on it.